rest of the show. Thanks for watching. We're happy you're with us Mondays. Am I right, Guillermo? That's right, Jimmy. <laughs> and I hate to say it because I know the weather's been so bad in so many places, but we had a beautiful weekend. Even today, it was sunny and 83 degrees. In Houston, one week ago today, the high was 23 degrees. Today, it was 71. None of it makes any sense. And as if the weather isn't crazy enough, now there are big metal circles falling from the sky. Look at this. This happened on Saturday, just outside of Denver. It started raining plane parts, debris from a United flight to Hawaii. Listen here, this is family. Oh my gosh. Hey. Oh yeah, there's more things. Yeah, Che, why don't we get going? Because these things are just falling. It's just dropping pieces. Yeah, I think we should go. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Very good idea. <laughs> One of the plane's engines caught fire and bits of Boeing were going everywhere. This landed on someone's lawn. Wow. It's the plane's diaphragm, I guess? I don't know. It's... <laughs> Miraculously, no one was injured. The plane returned to the airport and landed safely. You know, usually when someone's forced to return that quickly on a flight, it's because they got busted going to Cancun while their constituents <laughs> were freezing to death. It's... That story is only getting funnier. So now Ted Cruz is doing damage control after his estupido trip to Mexico. He lent a helping hoof to those in need this weekend and, of course, posted about it. Uh, there he is loading a 12-pack of water into a car that is parked in what appears to be an almost totally empty parking lot. Like many of Ted Cruz's attempts to mimic human behavior, this one was Ted on arrival. Here we see him reaching out tenderly uh, to a woman. Only Ted Cruz would think he can repair his image by touching a maskless constituent two days after getting off an international flight. <laughs> Senor Fraud also invited cameras to shoot him helping uh, someone remove carpet from a house that suffered water damage. There he is, Blob Vila at work. <laughs> yes, what is this called? Lift? I like the belt, too, is strong. I, I, you know what? I know he didn't get to enjoy Cancun, but he did get the next best thing. Some clever Houstonians hired a mariachi band to play outside his house. And <laughs> I would gladly chip in to keep them playing there until spring. I wonder what it's like when his wife and daughters got home on Saturday. You know, originally they were supposed to come home Saturday, and then, of course, his trip got cut short, but they stayed. I wonder, how was the vacation? You have fun? <laughs> I was in a parking lot pretending to pass out Dasani bottles. <laughs> right now, some of the members of Trump Incorporated are looking to point the finger of blame for the mess in Texas. Turns out this never would have happened if President Daddy was in charge. I think every single day, uh, Biden makes people um, miss Donald Trump more when you see these policies that are literally destroying jobs, that are destroying industries, that are causing Texas to freeze, that are cutting off our you know, power to our you know, energy grids. <laughs> Wait a minute. Joe Biden has been president for a month. He's already cutting off power to the energy grids? <laughs> and then Tweedledee weighed in with uh, his version of thoughts. Where is it? the outrage about what's going on in Texas and that Joe Biden is not there. You know who would have been there? Donald Trump. <laughs> That's right, he would have been there throwing rolls of paper towels as far as the eye can see. <laughs> These poor guys, I guess they don't have anything to like, talk about, to complain about, but I wanna give a shout out to Greg Kelly of Newsmax for really giving it his all. Greg devoted a segment of his show this weekend to feigning concern about Joe Biden's German Shepherd. I love dogs, but this dog needs a, a bath and a comb and uh, all kinds of love and care. I've never seen a dog in the White House uh, like this. Millie had like a staff and they really took care of her, very beautiful dog. This dog looks like from, I'm sorry, from the junkyard. And I love that dog, but he looks like he's not been well cared for. No, not, not <laughs> at all. Thank you for having us. Uh, no, he looks very dirty and disheveled and uh, very unlike a presidential dog like uh, Millie or Victory or something else uh, in the past in the, uh, pre in the White House. By something else, he was referring to Mike Pence, but <laughs> it's... <laughs> they had a panel for that. That's very dumb, but I do have to say I'm a little bit bothered by the Biden dogs. It's not the dogs themselves that bother me. It's that there are now multiple accounts posting tweets from their point of view. 
There's one called the First Dogs. There's one called the Oval Pawfus. And these are not run by the White House. They're fan accounts. But what they're writing, I believe, should be a federal crime. For instance, <laughs> it's Tongue Out Tuesday. After all, this goodest boo deserves all the likes and boops, obs. Give that goodest boy all the bacon. Now, why? Why? And you think, think a dog wouldn't know how to spell bacon? You know, it may go without saying, but nowadays it may not. I feel compelled to point out that the tweets were not written by the dogs. If dogs were writing them, yeah, great, fine. I mean, amazing even, good boy. But these, these words like puppers and chimkin are being typed by adults, by human adults. This country is already teetering on the brink. We don't need we go walkies now on top of it. We just, I can't take four more years of that. Speaking of things I can't take, remember Diamond and Silk, Trump's attention-seeking fans? Well, they have a show on Newsmax where they cover important topics like Bill Gates and his suspicious enthusiasm for plant-based meat. Now he want to tell us what we should eat and what we should eat. Mm. I heard he wants to do something with the sun. How? How is he allowed to sit on national TV? On national TV? And do this kind of stuff. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh. He's not no doctor. He's not no scientist. He's only some kind of computer guy. Uh -huh. and, and he made up viruses for these computers. Uh -huh. That's why we have to buy one every so many years. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You see what I'm saying? use all of these Allegedly. 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 Uh -huh. Allegedly. It's like Bert and Ernie with brain tumors. Poor, G <laughs> poor Bill Gates, by the way. The, the loonies are blaming him for everything now. There's a conspiracy theory that's been circulating on TikTok this week that claims the snow in Texas was fake snow manufactured by Bill Gates. Thank you, Bill Gates, for trying to <laughs> trick us that this is real snow. You'll see it's not melting. The hell? And it's going to burn. <laughs> snow don't burn. Snow <laughs> melts. <laughs> That's right. Bill Gates developed an unmeltable snowball. <laughs> Who would have ever imagined it would come to this? For two years, these people have been saying the storm is coming. And then when one finally does come, they don't believe it's real. It's Bill Gates. <laughs> we are one step closer to hopefully, maybe, getting a look at Donald Trump's tax returns. The Supreme Court today ruled that Trump must turn them over to prosecutors in New York. And once they have those, we'll finally have the evidence we need to lock Hillary up. Or something like that. The only, the only thing Trump has hidden from the public, as well as his tax returns, is Tiffany. So it will be interesting. I want to know everything. I want to know how much he didn't donate to charity. After the decision, Trump put out a statement saying, uh, among other things, he won the election and that this is all part of the greatest political witch hunt in history. And then Donnie Jr. woke up and weighed in with this. So, guys, the nonsense continues by allowing the release of my father's tax returns. The New York Times released the tax returns to an extent, and there was nothing more in there. What more could they learn other than just trying to simply hurt my father? If they can do it to Trump, they can, and they will do it to everyone. Keep watching, guys. Yeah, keep watching. <laughs> If we allow this to continue, no tax cheat will be safe. I think, I'll tell you what I think. I think we're about to find out how much Do Daddy paid for Don Jr. to lose his virginity. That's what he's worried about. <laughs> so prosecutors in New York will soon have Trump's perfect tax returns. Life is funny, isn't it? One day you're building walls, the next they're closing in on you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the My Pillow guy is in some legal trouble. Uh, Dominion Voting Systems is suing Mike Lindell for more than $1.3 billion for his nonsensical claims that their voting machines were rigged. Mike Lindell has been taunting the, this company for weeks. He said, please sue me. And you know what happens when you use the magic word. My lawyer said, come on, maybe they'll sue you. And I said, you know, so I antagonized, come on, sue me, Dominion. So they finally did. It's a beautiful day here for America. I want everybody to know that. This is a great day because the truth's going to come out. I don't care how long it takes and how much money it costs me. Well, it's going to cost you $1.3 billion. <laughs> plus legal fees. <laughs> but my pillow, the company itself, is also named in the suit. And if the case doesn't go Mike Lindell's way, which I don't see how it would, Fox News viewers could soon be seeing ads like this. Hi, I'm Chuck Kleinbaugh, Chief Marketing Officer at Dominion Voting Systems. And I guess I'm now in charge of selling a lot of pillows 
We were awarded in court. These pillows are, um, I don't know, they're white. They're squishy, you can sleep on them. Neil, maybe. They're made in a factory we own now, I guess. I think it's somewhere cold. Anyway, I'm sure the people who work there are great. They seem like they're good at sewing. And, you know, the reality is you need to sleep. And we have a ton of pillows to do it on. So if you call now, we'll sell you maybe 20 pillows uh, for, let's say, five bucks. So help me out and buy these. Our pillows. Make them your pillows. We don't want pillows. Why did this happen to us? <laughs> Why did any of this happen to any of us? Tonight on The Bachelor, they had uh, hometown visits, but not in the hometown. They didn't visit the hometown. They couldn't fly because of COVID. So the relatives from home visited their daughters and bachelor Matt at the resort where he's making love to them. And this is something that seems to be picking up steam. This is now the signature bachelor greeting. You don't just hug them. You jump up and wrap your legs around them, too. Hi. How are you doing? Mm. See you again. Mm. How are you? I'm doing well. Hi. Mm. Hi. Why do, what, why do they do this, Guillermo? <laughs> I think they love him. They love him? <laughs> what if you did that to me every time we were reunited? <laughs> You're gonna be Let's give it a try. All right, let's go. So, You do, you run to me, you jump up, and then you wrap your legs around me, all kind of in one motion. Okay, ready? Uh -huh. Ready? You did it! That's nice. Yeah! Amazing! All right, you can get down now. All right. All right. Yeah. My kidney is in my shoe. Can we have that? Can we look at that in slow motion in a romantic way? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll see you in the fantasy suite later. <laughs> On one of the dates tonight, Matt and Rachel uh, went skydiving, and that went like this. Rachel! <laughs> Rachel got a rose and a broken pelvis. <laughs> so there now are three women left, uh, including an elementary school teacher named Michelle, who got a virtual visit from her students. So I hear you have some questions <laughs> that you need to ask Mr. James. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jill. Are you going to give Miss Young a rose? We'll have to wait and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> Evie. Do you really think this is going to work? This never works. Are you insane? <laughs> hey, everyone. Two thumbs up if you think these are f***ing insane. <laughs> Good luck. You're going to need it. All right. Well, out of the mouths of babes, you know? Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.